welcome. So what I'm calling the third Wednesday night um, class is kind of yoga variety, just so I can sort of <laughs> operate on a whim with what I want to do each week. So this week what I want to do is I want to do some of the more sort of movement oriented stuff. It'll have like flavors of Pilates, um, flavors of um, somatic kind of hip release stuff. And that's kind of what my goal is actually, is for us to kind of walk out with the hips feeling really amazing. So a few things that might be helpful. I like to have a blanket because this early portion, um, it's nice to have a little support under your head. And then I'll also use that under my legs at the very beginning. Um, and then I also need a strap because we're going to do some stretches with the legs. Um, and this is helpful for kind of creating resistance. So you can use a regular yoga strap if you've got that, but if you don't, anything that has, that you can kind of pull on and release. So any, even like I've used a dish towel, if you have those kind of stretchier exercise bands, those would work. Um, a scarf, <laughs> like a, anything like that. Anything you can kind of, um, I like the ones that don't have a lot of stretch to them, but if it does have stretch, it's not going to be the end of the world because of how we're going to use them. Um, and then a couple of yoga blocks if you've got it. If you don't have yoga blocks, just use um, your blanket or a pillow to create what we're uh, what I'm about to set up. So I have one block, I'm turning it. Yoga, these yoga blocks are four inches wide and then they've got a six inch and then a nine inch edge. So if that's what you've got at home, cool. If you've got smaller ones that are two inches wide, that'll probably also work just fine. Um, but you might, if you want it to get up a little higher, you can turn it up on the higher notch. And some people like that higher notch anyway. So I'm going for four. That's enough for my upper back. And then I like my head higher. So I'm gonna take one and put it on the six inch edge. And again, if you went to the six inch edge and you wanted your head higher, you could go to the nine inch edge. Okay. So you can kind of play with, uh, or whatever blocks you've got, play with whatever blocks you've got. If you don't have yoga blocks, I'll, I'll, what we're doing is we're just creating a, a situation where the rib cage on the chest will be held up. So the arms are going to kind of drop down along the sides. So a blanket down the middle or a pillow underneath your upper back would work also. A towel, beach towel rolled up. <laughs> that would probably work just fine too. And whatever you got at home. All right, so I am gonna do this butterfly with my legs and I like to have a little bit of support under the legs. Oh. And where the blocks go, if you're using blocks, you want your shoulder blades to basically rest on the block, okay? So if it's any lower than the shoulder blade, it kind of pokes in the spine and it's not so nice. But <laughs> Your shoulder blade's basically kind of somewhere about where the bottom of the shoulder blade is. If that's about where the bottom of the block is, it usually is pretty comfortable. You just have to kind of play with it. Okay, so feet together, knees open. I've got this little bit of support up underneath the edge of the thigh so that there's just, I'm holding myself right at the point where I feel the stretch. And then the blocks, oh, which are kind of firm. <laughs> are under my upper back and I've distributed the weight of my upper back over the block on my shoulder blades. And rather than like something a little softer or squishier, like the space in between two ribs, having that big bone to support the weight on the, sh on the block is helpful. Oh, and then I'm just, my right arm is always a little bit, a little tiny bit more stretchy than the left. So I'm just looking for kind of like, where should that elbow live? So that it feels like the right amount of stretch because it's a little spicier on the right side for me than the left. And if you're new to my little world <laughs> yoga channel, um, I use all kinds of strange food words to describe yoga poses. Um, do your best to translate. <laughs> the word spicy doesn't make sense to you in terms of a physical thing. You know, like think about how, what I might mean by that. So when you eat spicy food, it's a little uncomfortable. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Not radically uncomfortable. I don't necessarily want to stop, but it's a little uncomfortable.
so just because that side is providing a little bit more resistance, I've turned my head away over to the left just to give that right side a tiny bit more traction. Oh, now you can play with that or you can leave your head right in the middle. Just be kind. It feels like it's landing in your neck in a way that's not good. Um, back off. This area where the neck and the shoulder meet um, going down to the top of the shoulder is an area loaded with nerve endings. So every nerve that comes out of the brain stem <laughs> to flow out of the body comes through a channel somewhere in the neck. And the ones for our arms and hands, which are crazy important, tons of nerves. I mean, think about the sensitivity you have in your fingertips, right? That's a lot of nerve endings, a lot of sensory data being sent back to the brain. All of that kind of runs through this little area where the collarbone and the shoulder blade um, and the arm bone meet. And so keeping kind of a high amount of respect for this kind of top of the shoulder region, which is going to stay, you know, if you need to adjust, adjust. I'm going to stay for a bit, you know, like another minute or so. I'm going to take three more breaths. There's this point where I know it's time to shift or switch or move. Um, and it's either like one of two things happens. If it's, if I'm in the pose and I'm not doing it right for me, then there is a point where I almost feel like my body wants to push me out of the pose. It just tightens up so tight that it, it's like being on a bed of nails. Okay, I'm like, Ooh, I don't want to get poked by the nails. Um, or <laughs> if it's good, then at some point my nervous system lets go and it almost feels like my whole body sighs out. And that is the point where for me it's time, like I can be pretty reasonably close to ending the pose at that point. So that's kind of what I wait for, what I was looking for was this kind of sense of, ah, oh, kind of release and everything kind of softening into this little extra bit of sensation. So I have hit that. So I have brought my knees together and I'm going to take these things out from underneath my back and come back onto my back. Now, if you want to stay longer, you can stay longer. If you hit that earlier, you know, as we're practicing together in this strange virtual world, um, <laughs> then you can come out earlier, right? So you just see, see if you can start to feel that. I may be making stuff up, right? But I don't think so. I think that there's this kind of interesting little, um, and it's very subtle, but it's just kind of interesting, subtle little clues that my nervous system um, is responding to the practice and that I'm really curious about right now. And so let me know <laughs> in the comment section or something along that line if you find it too. All right, so what I'm doing right now is just windshield wipering my legs back and forth. So this releases my hip joints. I like the way it feels in my low back. If I'm too aggressive with it, I'll feel um, a little too much tug in the hip, but I find it kind of nice um, to sort of work my way from the feet relatively close together. That's where I like to start, to sort of just every few moves, maybe adding a little bit more space so that eventually I get to a really wide placement of the feet. It's wider than an average yoga mat. Um, and I just am careful, like if it feels like I'm pushing my hip joint a little too hard, then I'll back off. And then I'm gonna add to this a little bit of upper back work. Now, if I lift my arm straight up toward the ceiling, it pulls my shoulder blade out of the way. And then there's some muscle tissue in between the two shoulder blades that I can kind of press into the floor. <laughs> and I oh, like the way that feels. That area tends to get really naughty, <laughs> naughty like knotted up. <laughs> not, not, not naughty like misbehaving. <laughs> Although maybe we can make an argument for that. <laughs> All right, 
So we're going to work on the hips with this kind of same notion. So I'm essentially what I'm going to do is just stop my left leg. And you can do the left leg all the way out straight, or you can leave it in this kind of constructive rest bent knee position. I'm going to start with straight and I might change my mind. And I'm keeping this sort of windshield wiper going for now. And at some point, it might be nice to pick the leg up and kind of make some little circles. If that winds up not feeling so good, you can change your mind. <laughs> Just put the leg back down. Oh. I'm just sort of letting the rest of my body respond to this little circle. So I'm gonna take my leg out straight and kind of give this a little bit more of kind of a shake. And I was trying to let the rest of my body just turn into jelly, right? Just so the shake sort of reverberates through the whole thing. Oh, I'm sort of trying to let my right toes get flippy floppy and loose. Oh, I'm gonna do this for a couple more breaths. And then I'm gonna kind of come back to this little back and forth weave here. So we're, it's, it's almost like we're trying to unwind the hip, right? So again, this is, just, there's no exact science for this. <laughs> it's sort of just intuitive. So sort of let yourself sort of intuitively feel what that movement pattern's doing. Now, I'm gonna do something that's a little bit more um, commonly done as a sort of psoas release. So I've drugged my left foot back up in here so now I've got the left foot just to support me while I do this. So I'm gonna slide the right leg out and then kind of weave it back and forth between an external rotation and an internal rotation. We have a new neighbor with a rather yippy terrier. <laughs> so I'm not sure if that's translating on the Sounds like more than one dog is involved. Uh, in any case, so kind of going back and forth here for another like two or three rounds. And then I'm gonna draw the leg in and out a few times. So bringing the legs so the toes are kind of pointing straight up. I'm just gonna draw that back, slide it out, turn it, draw it back, slide it out, turn the toes inward, draw it back. Okay, so toes straight up out, draw back, just leaving the toes up, toes out to the external rotation, draw the leg up, toes back out to the internal rotation, that one's a little harder for me, it doesn't go as far, and then one more round, so I'm going to keep the toes straight up as I draw the leg back, going out and turning the toes to that external rotation, bringing it back, so it's almost like that little butterfly shape. And then this one is the trickier one where I want the leg to rotate in. It only goes so far, but I can feel that muscle contraction right there. And then draw it up. Okay. All right, so I'm done playing with the right leg for now. So I'm going to stretch that guy out and then turn over to the left leg. So kind of weaving back and forth, kind of back to that. I like to start with the windshield wipers because I know I love them. <laughs> And then just kind of trying to mimic that same pattern and picking the leg up. Sometimes I find that I like having the foot on the floor a little bit more. I'm going to kind of circle. It makes me make sound effects. I'm not sure why. Oh. I'm gonna get this oh, shake going. Now my left leg does not shake nearly as easily as the right. So for whatever reason, it requires a lot more concentration. <laughs> if I stop talking to you, that's why. Oh. And again, I'm trying to let my toes get kind of flippy floppy. Oh. Two more breaths. gonna kind of ooh, come back a little bit and then 
dragging that right leg back. I'm gonna let the left leg drift out. And then from here, just, oops, hey pumpkin. <laughs> just kind of rotating internally and externally. Just wobbling the leg back and forth in the socket. My neighbors can hear me talking as easily as I can hear them talking. This could be entertaining. <laughs> All right, so now that I've kind of done this a little while, I'm gonna do it one more time. Then I'm gonna start kind of doing this in and out. So toes pointing straight up, I'm just gonna glide the leg back so now they're both kind of even. Toes up, glide the leg out to the degree possible. Come back to the center, glide the leg out, little external rotation, so we're just gonna drag the leg back toward that butterfly shape. Slide it out, rotate it inward, so we're kinda dragging it into this internal shape. Out, straight down the middle. Out, now my mat is really slippery and I've got carpeting otherwise, so it's pretty easy for me to drag the leg, but you can hover it. Just be mindful that um, we're trying to do like the, let the leg be as heavy as possible on the ground while we're, you know, like within reason, because if it's too heavy, it won't, won't slide. But within reason, kind of letting the leg rest. So if you hover it, just hover it like the tiniest little bit. So it mostly stays kind of on the floor and there's just that little sense of movement. So I'm just doing straight down the center. I'm going to do it one more time. So I come straight up the center with the toes pointing straight up. Then rotate out, come up again so the toes point outward and the knee points up. And then one more time I'm going to rotate inward and rotate up that way. So I feel the little internal rotator. Oh, and then I'm going to pull the leg back in. So the internal rotator muscle is, it lives right here on the front of the hip, kind of just right in this little narrow space. Um, and then the external hip rotators live in this kind of under the glute area. So those two, and then there's all, you know, all the adductor and abductor muscles on the outer hip and inner thigh um, that allow, uh, that fill in all the space. And so these little rotation muscles are tinier um, and so the movement that we do for them, like what we just did, doesn't have to be really big, right? This little windshield wiper move is really powerful for the internal external hip rotators because they're not very big muscles to begin with. <laughs> like we're talking about the like glutes, like these giant muscles over here, that's a lot more, <laughs> a lot more stuff going down, which is what we're gonna do next. <laughs> but, um, or at least a little bit. But uh, these little dudes, like this little tiny muscle here, those little tiny muscles there, they're not that big. They don't need as much um, of our, uh, <laughs> not that they don't need attention because they do, but um, they just don't need us to do really big fancy movements. We can do little tiny um, flowy movements and access those guys. All right, so speaking of tiny flowy movements, <laughs> we're gonna do this little rolling up, rolling down bridge. So this is about the glute or glutes, <laughs> the gluteus maximus in particular, but it access a little bit of the others as well. And then it's also an opportunity for the back. So we're gonna start with just this movement in the pelvis. We're just lifting the, just kind of lifting the bottom of the pelvis up. Maybe even the sacrum comes off the floor a little bit. And then we kind of rock it back down, okay? So lift it up and rock it back down. And this helps too for me, like if there's a little bit of sort of discomfort around the sacrum, sometimes just this is all that needs to happen. Just, and even smaller, where it's just the tiniest little movement, just like rocking in a teacup. You know, or on a, on a saucer, a little teacup saucer. Like just the tiniest little rock is all that's required to kind of release the pressure or play with movement happening in that area. Okay, so now I'm gonna take it up a little notch. So for me, it helps to have my arms positioned with my um, elbows bent because 
<laughs> I have a carrying angle. So we're gonna, as I kind of lift the hips now up a little higher and then snake the spine down. And I'm doing this flowy, so I'm not worried about necessarily feeling each individual bone this time, um, although I like to do that too. Um, I just want to kind of feel like there's kind of a flow or a rope-like movement going up and then whew, that little rope-like movement comes back down. And again, if you've got some sacroiliac discomfort, just do the tiniest, babiest of the rocks. This, if it feels good, cool. But mm, <laughs> if there's some action in a glute that's a little, like if there's an adhesion in a glute or something that's tugging quite a lot, just that little movement might be all that's required. Start to work with that adhesion. And adhesion is when layers of connective tissue get tangled, <laughs> kind of, or um, there's not any movement in between them. Um, and so what we're aiming for is movement, fluid, um, soft. Okay, so I'm gonna translate this a little bit differently now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my arms over my head. You can leave your arms down here. I want to, um, I'm gonna make like a, almost like a arm basket over my head a little bit so that I am gonna try to distribute the weight across my shoulders. So it's really about broadening for me the sort of shoulder girdle so that my upper arms and my shoulders all become kind of the support. And then once I'm up here, I'm gonna sort of tilt the hips from side to side. And I'm riding on my heels and kind of letting my toes, my foot turn with me. Now this works my hamstrings and my glutes like crazy. So sometimes I have to pause and release the pressure from that. Oh, 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 hi there. Well, hello. Hello, tiny weasel. What are you doing? What are you up to? Go over there and play with your sister. Or, you know, do your thing where you wander around the living room for a few hours. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna try again. <laughs> yeah, hopefully I'm not gonna make enough of a cave that someone will get stuck in there. <laughs> I hope not. I don't think I have that much tra <laughs> that much space under me. Isn't that a ferret will get stuck in there. Oh. Just kind of jiggling back and forth. I've got trying to keep the weight on my shoulders and not on my neck, but I'm not moving my neck much. Okay, and then coming back down. I'm just kind of releasing that. Oh. Oh. All right, so now we're gonna kind of get into this strap. <laughs> so I'm gonna put a, a blanket underneath my legs so that the leg I'm not working with has just the tiniest bit of support, okay? Sometimes it, I find that really helpful Sometimes I like the support to be quite large, but in this case, I'm gonna do quite small. Hello there. Go that way. <laughs> Probably won't work out. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> Holy smokes. Oh, ready. I am gonna um, make a little loop in my strap so I've got a long tail. So if whatever you're using, just give yourself the longest possible tail so you have lots of space to follow your leg, okay? So I'm gonna work with my right leg first. So I'm gonna put the strap around the foot. So it's up near the ball of my foot and I want it tight enough that it's not gonna slide off too much. But hang on just a second, I'm gonna tighten it up just a little bit more. Okay. So if you're, if it's doubled over and your strap is, um, you know, like you're using a towel or something, just as a, however wide you can go, that's the width you've got to work with. So I'm coming into this little hamstring stretch, and then I'm gonna back off and swing the leg out, and then come on back. So I'm just gonna vacillate between this little hamstring stretch and this wider leg out to the side stretch. Now you can linger if it feels like something you want to do. Oh. But I'm kind of, like my whole point with tonight's practice was that we would be a little more in motion 
and then steady. And I like having the strap because it provides this little bit of resistance. I can push into it and pull on it to assist the leg so that I can use the least amount of effort to get the most amount of sensation. Okay, I think I'm going to do this one more time. There's a kind of nice sensation that's developing. And I want to stay there. So I'm going to bend the knee. Oh, take that guy off of there. Put the foot down and again. I'm going to kind of come back to this kind of windshield wiper move as kind of my little in between space. Oh. And while I'm doing this, I'm just noticing like, is there any difference between the right side and the left side? Mm. Right now my right side feels oh, like the, the word I'm going to use is meltier. <laughs> it's just a kind of pleasant, soft warmth to that hip. And it feels like it's a little closer to the ground. Like it, you know, got a little bit melted. Okay. So I'm going to turn a little bit. So I have a little more space. I'm not going to run into furniture. I'm going to let my right leg rest. I'm going to put the strap on the left foot. And again, so I've got some length so I can kind of play with moving between the hamstring stretch and this little outer thigh or inner thigh stretch. So out to the side, um, oh, movement pattern. Now I'm doing most of this movement with my leg. I'm just using the strap kind of for resistance. So I'm pulling on it as I go, just so that I'm pushing the leg into the strap and pulling on it at the same time, just so that the resistance is there. But I'm not trying to pull my leg beyond its range of motion. I'm letting the leg determine the range of motion and then I'm just trying to keep up with it with my hands. Oh. Okay, I think I'm gonna do two more of these. It's starting to give me that kind of pleasant buzziness. It tells me I'm probably good. <laughs> oh, okay. So as I come back, I'm going to bend the knee, slip the strap off, come back to that sort of windshield wipery movement. And I'm letting the legs just be pretty wide apart. So I'm going to come to a seated position to do a little bit more kind of similar stuff, but um, <laughs> on my way there, I'm going to roll onto my side and kind of <laughs> give myself plenty of time to uh, get move it, get myself in that position. So if you have other ideas for yourself, like you might want to um, stretch out or just lie down for a second, or you want to do some interpretive dance or some downward dog. You can do any of that stuff. Oh, okay. And again, I'm sort of just noticing, paying attention, <laughs> be present for whatever it is that's happening. So I can decide like, oh, I should change that up. I should put some support under that knee or whatever, whatever might come up. Okay. so. Right now, I'm just sitting in a cross-legged position, but I'm going to elevate my hips a little bit. So I've taken this blanket and folded it so it's about an inch thick or so. And then I'm going to put myself on it so that my hips are kind of right on the edge, but not so much on the edge that it feels like I'm going to fall forward, just enough on the edge that it gives me a little bit of a range of motion. So I'm going to start with this range of motion, just kind of back and forth. 
which is more spine than anything. So I'm letting the pelvis kind of drop back, letting the breastbone kind of reach forward. And again, it doesn't have to be a big movement. Like just as soon as you feel something, that's it. Stop there. Okay. So then I'm going to broaden this out so that I'm going to kind of go to the diagonal. So come into the diagonal and curving back. And this is a much smaller movement because I'm kind of bringing this side of the rib cage this way and this side of the rib cage that way, right? A little smaller movement. There's only so much movement I can get in those ribs. <laughs> okay, coming back towards the center. Kind of rocking back and forth a bit. And then I'm going to start to do the same thing, but kind of going this way. So moving this side of the rib cage forward, that side of the rib cage towards the back. It's like I'm trying to work on the diagonal almost, like this plane, right? So forward and back. And again, it's not, it doesn't feel like a very big movement, but I can feel like the rib cage right here kind of open up, or the muscles in that area open up. <laughs> A little differently. A couple more of those. And this for me is a, a largely spine and ab related, but it's kind of playing with the relationship that I have with the hips um, in that regard. So now with the legs stretched out, I'm going to get a little more dramatic with the movement. So folding forward, coming back, folding forward, coming back. Now this is to say, I have movement in my pelvis here. <laughs> Not everybody does. When the legs go out wide, there's for some of us, boom, the pelvis gets locked backwards. So if that's your situation, then you have a couple of other options. You can go back to a bent knee, and even a cross-legged position, um, or you can try the legs just closer together and see if that's helpful, and then you'll just kind of go out here away from the leg. So whatever your, if, they, if your pelvis will tilt toward the leg, great. And if it doesn't, change the legs. Let's see if you can get that kind of movement going forward. So I'm gonna go center, Ooh, side, center, side. And then I'm gonna kind of just keep going like that for a few rounds. So it's coming into, I'm not trying to bounce against my hamstrings really hard. It's really just like, where's the point where I oh, feel something right there. It's really sort of gentle, not too pushy, just a movement in this kind of general pattern. Okay, so I'm going to go back down the center one more time. I think I started on that side, so I'll finish over here. And then <laughs> that created some situations where my <laughs> digestive tract had some thoughts too. Um, in any case, sometimes that's what yoga does. Um, I'm now going to do a little bit of twistiness. So I'm going to bring my feet or my legs back into a, a position where I'm sort of sitting cross-legged. I'm going to back up on this blanket just a little bit because now I don't need the legs to kind of be sloping downwards as much. So I want a little bit more support kind of broadly across the bottom. You can also take the blanket out if that's appropriate. Now I'm gonna leave my legs like this kind of, I'm gonna put the other leg in front in a minute, but um, just really simple cross-legged, a little bit close together. I'm trying to kind of smoosh them into the center line a little bit. You can do other leg arrangements if you have a mind to do so. But this gives me the most centered pelvis and the tallest spine, which is how I want to work with the twist. So I'm going to twist around and then release. And I want to feel like each little vertebrae and I'm trying to center this movement in the vertebrae that take up my rib cage. Okay. So I'm even trying to let my neck kind of go along for the ride and I'm trying mostly to keep my hips and low back out of it. So I want to try to feel the vertebrae in my rib cage spin me in and out of this twist. In a second, I'm gonna land in it and then I can go further, right, if I want to, add some extra parameters. But right now, I just wanna feel that movement. And again, 
there's a point for me where I can feel like, oh, there's like a little release happening in my upper back. And I'm thinking another one or two of these will give me a sense of softening. Oh, and if that doesn't make any sense, don't worry about it. Like, I didn't notice this stuff a long time ago. <laughs> really, um, it's just playing with poses. But, um, and again, I'm using, I'm using words to describe my experience that you may not be used, you wouldn't use, but you might be having the same experience. So don't worry about what I'm saying so much as just feel like, is there a point where your body feels a little more comfortable in the movement pattern or, or in holding a pose like this? Um, is there a point where it feels like you, there's a relaxing, like the body relaxes a little bit? Um, or on the opposite end of the spectrum, like, do you feel those inclinations that you're doing too much or going too far? And that's how we learn from our practice. <laughs> like, what's the right amount of practice? Now, I'm not trying to drag myself deeper into the twist, but what I am trying to do is anchor myself a little bit through my arms so that I can do just the tiniest little movement in my shoulder blades in and out and just have the arms a little anchored. And this is super tiny movement. I'm just slowly dragging my shoulder blades towards each other and then pushing them away from each other. I thought this was going to be practice for the hips, but sometimes a little shoulder doesn't hurt. <laughs> All right, so I'm letting this twist go. Now, I'm not going to be ready to do the other side just yet, but I am going to switch which legs in front. Now, my habit is to sit with my left leg in front when I do um, seated cross-legged positions. So my right leg is just a little bit different. Like it sticks out farther in front. That's the way it is. And some, sometimes like, you know, there's times where I, I can't sit with the other leg in front. I have to stay with my regular side. And if that's the case, just stay with your regular side. You'll be fine. You can start to kind of work yourself into uh, the opportunity to be able to do either leg, but it may take some time. Okay. So I'm, I'm just kind of feeling out like is the, is there a little sense that my back is more even, that I've kind of, that the whatever twisting was happening is done? I'm not quite there yet, but I'm close. So I'm doing these little shoulder movements just to oh, create some flexibility there. Okay, so again, I'm going to try to work just with the vertebral column. My head's along for the ride, but I'm not turning the neck. And I'm not trying to hold my hips still per se. I'm just trying not, you know, I'm trying to use different muscles than the ones that go with the hip. <laughs> try to use just the muscles that twist my rib cage around and try to feel like the vertebrae in the ribs, you know, in that rib area twisting. I get to about the, like the middle of the shoulder blade range and I feel a lot of resistance, especially on this side. So there's an adhesion in my right shoulder that holes when I try to twist all around all the way this way. There might also be a slight scoliosis in my spine that resists this twist. So I'm not trying to be pushy. <laughs> Just go into that resistance and coming out. Okay. Because I can feel the resistance. So I'm going to start uh, with holding the twist like about half of what I think I should, like the other side was creating. Um, or about half the amount of distance because that's about where I feel the resistance. And then I'm just gonna hang out with that. And then I'm gonna try to do this really subtle little shoulders in, shoulders out movement. I don't get as much range of motion in my right shoulder blade twisting this way because there's already pressure. Sometimes you get injured, y'all, and there's scar tissue in your body that lives there for a long time. <laughs> in my case, let's see, uh, almost 20 years, <laughs> 18 years, the scar tissue has been there. Oh. So I have full range of motion with my arm. I can get stuff out of the cupboard, lift my arms, move it around the whole direction, but I can still feel the resistance of that scar tissue underneath my shoulder blade. All right, I'm going to come out of there. And give everything a little rinse. Oh, 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 oh. All right, before we end this practice with a little um, rest, and I'm going to rest in a Shavasana with an elevated leg tonight, um, just to kind of continue this sort of little 
uh, deliciousness of the hips. <laughs> so I get a really good hip flexor release. Um, before I do that, I'm going to do some naughty shodana. So I don't know why I had my hair up for that, <laughs> but somehow I did. <laughs> it was annoying me. All right, so uh, I've got this situation. I've got my two peace sign fingers. I've curled those in. I've got a ring finger and a thumb to operate my nostrils. Now, that being said, you can also put your fingertips, your peace sign fingers, right on your forehead. Test to make sure you can breathe out of both nostrils. Okay. <laughs> my right one is not as open as my left. So when I'm doing this, I am not going to close my left nostril all the way off. I'm going to just put my finger there. So I pay attention to the right nostril, but I will still be able to breathe. <laughs> so take a big breath. Let go. So sometimes when I do this, the nostrils open up. So if it does, cool. So I'm going to close the right one off and inhale through the left. And then I'm going to switch over to the right again, not closing it all the way off on the left, but putting a little pressure there. Exhale through the right. Inhale. Switch sides and exhale. Inhale. Switch sides and exhale. Inhale. And switch sides and exhale. Now you're just paying attention to the nostril you're working with, even if the other one isn't closed all the way. And don't be too forceful. Let it be gentle and sweet. every time it's time to exhale. So I'm going to do two more rounds. I'm going to end the next time I or exhale through the left nostril. as best I can, kind of staying in the mindset where the breath brought me, I'm going to try to unfurl myself into a final relaxation shape. I'm going to kind of build a little stonehenge <laughs> with a couple of locks and a pillow here. really nice elevation. So this just drops my femur bone really deep into my hip socket and lets my low back really broaden out and relax. Some people will want to have less to get the same impact or some of us may want more. I'm also going to give my head just the tiniest little pillow with a blanket. look for like am I ready sometimes I need to especially if I go directly from a seated thing to lying down I need to just jiggle my toes so my feet fall asleep when I sit <laughs>
however long it takes for your kind of setup to get comfortable. And sometimes for me, it's sort of like um, I need to just make little tiny adjustments after my body settles into place. Then let yourself just, it's almost like we're trying to let ourselves float here. So we're trying to let all of the muscles relax. Unwind the face, let the eyes get soft and kind, let the mouth get soft and fluffy. No tension in the lips or the jaw, no tension around the eyes. Notice too, like the arm and the hands, just releasing any tension from the palms, letting the fingers just gently fall away from one another. And similarly with the feet, the legs, just letting the legs be heavy and the toes just kind of gently with whatever gravity is pulling on them, just sort of gently release from one another. Just the head and the, you know, the hips so that the spine feels weightless. adjusting the, the head or the hips like just like a tiny bit like you're just you want to slide a dime underneath one side can be really powerful just allow a tiny bit of change to happen if one side feels different than the other and if you find the place where it feels like there's no pressure stay <laughs> least amount of pressure possible. Notice the breath. Just see if you can feel the breath kind of create almost like a ripple as it sort of drops in with the inhale. And then lifts back out with the exhale. you can start to move again. And you can really just start with the fingers and toes and then kind of work it to the wrist and ankles. And then lead it to some stretching. Oh. A little happy baby or you know, some happy baby equivalent. <laughs> and then you can roll oh. and prop yourself up. for joining me for a little weavy <laughs> uh, flowy uh, hip practice. Hopefully your hips will feel amazing.
Nice big breath. And then 